The conflict in Syria has become much less severe over the past months. The Syrian army, backed by its allied ground forces and the Russian Air Force, has almost totally defeated major militant and terror groups. But the situation still seems precarious. That's perhaps because the Syrian army has yet to re-establish control over all of Syria. This has created vacuums on the ground where the United States and its allied forces are still militarily active. The Syrian army has told U.S. forces and their allied Kurdish fighters to leave immediately, following the defeat of the Daesh terrorist group. But the United States is apparently planning to do just the opposite. It's been revealed that Washington is putting together a 30,000-strong force in the north. The U.S.-backed militia involving Kurdish forces is planned to be stationed along the border with Turkey. The goal is what it's been all along, which is to subdivide Syria uh, if they couldn't control it outright. And they wanted to subdivide it into smaller sectarian-based weak states in order to weaken the resistance to um, U.S. and allied control over the entire region. So I am seeing this as a continuation of a quite a clear plan to continue to try to uh, break off that northeastern part of Syria. The revelation has drawn angry reactions not only from Damascus, but also from Ankara. The Syrian foreign ministry condemned America's plan to form an armed militia as a blatant assault on Syria's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Damascus warned that the plan is aimed at partitioning Syria. Meanwhile, the government in Ankara, which has been seeking the downfall of the Syrian government over the past years, also came down heavily on the American plan. Turkey's concerns are, however, much different from those of Syria. The Turkish government is worried that a Kurdish force near its border may encourage its own Kurdish population to rise up and seek independence from Turkey. President Recep Tayyip Erdogan was quick to react to the news he warned that the U.S. is seeking to build a terror army on Turkey's southern border. Erdogan also said Turkish forces are ready for a major operation against the positions of the Kurdish fighters in border areas. Ties between Ankara and Washington have been seriously strained recently over America's support for Kurds in Syria. Erdogan of Turkey is capable of anything, really, and he seems to have been playing a game of both sides, meaning Russia and the U.S., against each other. It's really hard to tell what, how far he'll go in this, but I think that um, he's unpredictable enough to that that is a, a real possibility. And in that case, you know, then um, everything breaks loose. I mean, it could be a total conflagration almost immediately. Uh, Syria is never going to accept this, any of this, and, and least of all Turkey coming in in full invading force, even though they're already there as an invading force to a great extent. Um, this would change Russia's policy significantly. The United States deployed hundreds of its ground forces to Syria in 2017 without any mandate from Damascus. It said their mission was to eliminate Daesh in the northern city of Raqqa. But now, despite the defeat of Daesh, America is unwilling to end its military role there. It's defying calls from Syria, Russia and Iran to leave. Observers are warning that the American involvement could still lead to an escalation of tensions and further complicate the situation. So we literally have uh, the U.S. International Coalition. We have their mercenary force of the so-called SDF, which is a rebranded Kurdish group. And then we have uh, Turkey as a rogue player. And then we have, uh, you know, Russia, Iran, and Syria. So I think it's too soon to know, but it, it could be a disaster and quickly, hopefully not. Washington seems determined to remain active in Syria, despite the fact that its presence is violating international law.